Hi, Bruce Newman with Newman Restorations here. Today we're working on valves for an auto piano player system. These are the type that have the force fit collars that hold the valves in place, the valve seats. So the outer valve seat is removable, so that just comes off. And then you'll see three collars. The two lower collars hold the bottom valve seat in place. And then this uh, upper collar is what adjusts the valve travel and holds the uh, top valve seat in place. So first of all, you have to remove the valve seats. Keep in mind, you never remove this bottom collar. It's set to be the proper distance between the end of the threaded part of the stem and the valve seat. So always leave that one alone. So I built a jig, consists of a thin steel plate with a little keyhole shape in it. So I can slide that collar up through there and slide it over, put it on my press, and then just press that stem right off the collar there. So there's the collar. And there's the rest of the valve with that collar gone. So now we just put this back on the jig with the threaded stem facing down and that collar fits right in the hole there. And we can push that one through. There's the collar. There's the lower valve. So now we have the valve stem with the one lower collar in place, and that's ready for steel wooling or whatever cleaning might need to be done to it. All right, so let's move on over here to the valve chest. So this has all been prepared, of course, any shellac that was residue that was remaining here around the valve seats has been cleaned off. All the valve wells have been resealed with shellac, as well as the channel that goes to the pneumatics. And then um, everything was given a coat of uh, shellac to seal it on the inside of the chest. And we are then ready to go ahead and start um, reinstalling the valves. This whole roll, row of valves is already done. Uh, these have been gapped, so they are ready to have the valve guide uh, put on and then the uh, shellac sealer. So I'm going to go ahead and move to this section right here and show you what I do uh, to uh, gap the valves. So let's move over to the drill press where I've got that all set up to uh, do valves. So here on the drill press, I have a steel block with a hole in it, and that hole is sized just a couple thousandths of an inch larger than the valve stem. And then I have a brass rod. It also has a hole drilled in the bottom of it that is large enough to clear the threaded end of the stem. And the hole is uh, fairly deep, but not deep enough to actually touch this valve seat. This is the lower valve seat. You don't want the, the rod touching that at all. So it actually hits the end of the valve seat uh, before it can touch the, uh, the ring on there. So this is all held in place with some two-sided two -sided tape so it doesn't move. And what you do is, so I've already put the first valve on and now it's time to put the collar on for the outer valve. I've got the stop set on the drill press. So most of the valves, once I put the outer valve seat on, are roughly the proper spacing already. Some are gonna be, you know, too gappy. Some are gonna be too lean, depending on the thickness of the leather. But at least this is a good average and that is discovered just by trial and error 
until you find um, a distance that works well. So let's move on back over to the valve chest here. Here we have all the valve seats. They have been lapped on a piece of glass with very, very <clears throat> fine emery cloth to make sure that they're completely flat and smooth. And then I've sprayed them with uh, McLube, which is basically a, a mold release. And that makes them very slick so that the valves will uh, seat properly. And then we have the valve guides the screws, and of course the, uh, the buttons that we won't be putting on right at the moment. So the first step is to go ahead and load our valves into the valve well. And we'll go ahead and put the seats in place. So now we've got our uh, dial indicator here set up with a special little base so that it can straddle the uh, valve stem. And Paul, why don't you just kind of come right over here. So you put that on there and hold it down fairly tight. Give it a couple taps to make sure, what that does is that seats that top valve seat to make sure that it is um, fully in a seated position. Zero out your gauge and see where you are. So we're at 31, I wanna be at 35. So this valve happens to be a little bit too lean. So what we'll do is pop it out, remove the upper valve seat, and I've got some little spacers made of mylar. Each one is about five thousandths of an inch thick. So I'll put two spacers on here. Now we're gonna go back to the press So with those spacers on there, it's going to shove that collar. So I've got the 10,000th inch of spacers on here, and now I'll put it back in here. And with the spacers on there, what that's going to do is force that collar a little bit closer. Now we'll go back and give it a try. Put the valve seat back on. All right, so now we're, oh, we're very close. My goal is to be between 35 and 37, and we're at 37 right there. And I've discovered that often when you uh, put the screws in here, it takes it down sometimes a thousandth of an inch or a half of a thousandth of an inch. So I think I'm gonna leave it there. So you can see right there we're at 37. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Zero it out. Okay, so this one's at about 41 to 42, so this one's too gappy. So what I've done is made a bunch of spacers of different thicknesses. This is old Mylar birthday balloon. It's about 1,000, one and a half thousandths of an inch thick. This is office paper. That's about four thousandths of an inch thick. And this is some Mylar, Mylar vellum sheeting, and that's about five thousandths of an inch. So I was about seven thousandths of an inch too gappy. So what we're going to do is put a five thousandths inch 
mylar piece and then a little piece of this balloon on there. And make sure that that's pressed on there. Now we'll give it a try and see where we are. Zero it out. Right on, 36, perfect. So you just continue doing that all the way on down the line. So we'll leave that there for now. And let's move over here and we'll get these um, plates sealed and the uh, uh, valve guides put on there. So I have a mixture of burnt shellac right here. And I've burned off the alcohol until it's about the consistency of molasses. Now I'm sure there are several different ways people might want to do this. But I prefer painting it onto the bottom of the plate itself because that way, I mean the alternative is you could paint it on here, but if I were to accidentally drop this, then I would pollute my valve seat with shellac and I'd have to clean it off. By putting the shellac on here, if I dropped it, it shellac's not gonna ruin the valve seat. So it's a little easier to make sure that your valve seat stays clean, in my opinion. So let's get a little shellac there. Now, if, if you've done a good job making sure that your valve board is nice and smooth and sanded before you re shellac it here, then you don't need a whole lot of shellac on these valve seats because it won't take much to make sure they seal. So when you press down, you want to see just a little bit squeezing out. That's perfect. Put the valve guide on. Oh, whoops, I already had one. And then your screws. tight enough until it snugs. And then you can do a quick recheck. We're right there at 36. So looking good. Thanks.